Hello, my beautiful friends. Still sick, slightly better. Still coughing, but that seems to be the worst of it now. My back aches, but some of the other aches and pains have gone away. So this is good. I just got done uh, doing a wisdom Women's Wisdom Village event. It was um, announced on Facebook, you know, in my endless feeds of, of spiritual things that pop up in my Facebook feed. And I had uh, signed up for it. And, you know, I'm always skeptical of these things because I go to a lot of them and some of them are absolute bupkis. But this one was not. So I'm going to link the information, uh, Dr. A, below for her website. Um, she's offering a retreat in California, if that's local to any of you. Um, uh, it doesn't work out timing-wise for me. But, um, it, you know, I will say that it was a legit event. Um, it was run... Um, uh, Nikki was the, um, person that was leading us through, uh, they're doing a series for each of the eightfold wheel celebrations. They started with Samhain and, and they're going around and the, like Samhain is the new year. It's the end of the year. So this is the first one, um, Alvin Arthen, which is what I celebrate. Um, Nikki, uh, comes from the Irish perspective, which is, you know, very similar, uh, to the Scottish perspective in Iona, which is what I tie to is on the Irish sea. So, um, and Columba was Irish. So, um, you know, so for me, and I'm also Irish too. So, so for me, it was uh, very connected. Um, but she started off talking about the eightfold wheel and what that is. And then, um, she, in the Druidic tradition, um, Druids did not write things down because writing was considered sacred. So, um, so everything was done orally. And uh, I think Druids had to learn, I think she said it, it was like, I don't know, 38 different stories they had to know by heart through memory. Um, and they had to, you know, be able to sing these different songs and do all this different stuff. And it was all done from memory uh, because the written word was sacred. They could write in Latin um, and Greek over time, but um, everything was still oral. Um, and so it's uh, this creation of the stories. And so she she had created a story about the Kaliak, which is um, the figure that is associated with the Alvin Arthen period or uh, the winter solstice or Yule, right? And we, and the reason we celebrate the Yule over like this three days, the 20th, 21st, 22nd, um, is because, you know, if you think back to before the calendar that we use, the Gregorian calendar, um, the Celtic calendar, right? It's not like people had pieces of paper hanging on their, you know, you know, their hut walls, right? They, they followed the calendar by the sun and the moons and the stars, and that's how they figured things out. And these three days, to them, the days were dark, like the days were short and the nights were long and it was dark and it didn't look like the the sun and moon had moved for three days, right? Because every day, like, it would move, so, you know, things would move a little bit, but for these three days, it didn't look like anything moved at all. So I, like, I never thought about that. So that was something that Dr. A brought up, and I was like, huh, never really thought about that, but that's true. Like, it does appear for these three days that things just stand still. Um, another thing uh, they talked about was how this is not the time of year to be making New Year's resolutions. And I've always felt that in my soul. I've always felt that that at Hogmanay, like, it's not a time to, like, start something new. It's time to dream about new things. It's time to plant seeds, you know, of inspiration. But it's not a time to, like, you know, this is when I'm going to quit smoking or this is when I'm going to quit drinking or whatever um, because the energy isn't right in the alignment of everything. So, um, so pressure's off. You don't have to make your New Year's resolutions, which is great because I don't make them. And uh, and when in years when I had in the past, I never kept them. So that was interesting. So after uh, the story, which was this great story about this wise woman and, and you know, the connection of women and um, it was a great story. I couldn't recreate it for you if I tried. She led us through a visual mes meditation. And I have to tell you, if you follow the channel, you know I am a hot mess when it comes to meditating. Um, I'm better at it. I've definitely grown in the past uh, two years. But um, visual meditations, um, I can do a few of them that I like really, really well. Um, some of you have been through the one where I stand and I visualize my ancestors going back. That one works for me. Um, and this one worked for me and it was meeting the Kaliak. Um, it was, it was actually, uh, going into the other world to meet her. And, um, and that was very, very powerful. And, uh, I highly recommend, um, you know, uh, you know, just trying 
um, if you, if you, I, I would lead you in medica meditation if I could, but I, I, I barely know how to do it myself. Um, but it was really just very powerful how she kind of led us into the other world, how we went up to meet her, um, and ask her a question. I didn't have a question to ask her. So my question was, what question should I ask you? And so, uh, and it was just, you know, it was very warm and familiar and, and powerful, it really, really was very powerful. And, um, and, 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 you know, the ultimate truth of it is that, that, um, that person is you, right? And you gave a gift and you got a gift. She gave me my runestones. Um, and I had nothing to offer her like the little drummer boy. I had nothing to offer her, but light and love. Like, that's what I had. That's what I had to give. Um, which if you think about, you know, internally and psychologically, you know, that is sort of the mission I have. And that, and it was another calling. If you've been watching the channel a long time, you know, I get these callings from spirit that I need to take what I do here more seriously. Um, and I know how to do it because that's what I do for my real life job. So um, I know how to make this work if I wanted it to be more viral. Um, but I've been content being small, um, mostly out of a out of fear, I think, of not being considered legitimate, right? Because there's so many charlatans out here, um, and I don't want to be one of them. I don't want people to think of me as one of them. So I feel like if I stay small, um, I always want to be humble. But if I stay small, I don't become part of this caricature that people have drawn up about spiritual people. Um, so, um, it was very, very powerful. And, um, you know, and the thing that, um, the Kelly, I handed me were my runes and they, and this specific bag, which is the bag that I got in Scotland. Um, and, and, um, uh, Nikki had reminded me that, you know, runes come from the earth. They come from deep, th from rock. They're made out of rock and they come from, you know, th the earth and they're, they're part of the earth and the earth is part of us and we're part of the earth. We're all connected. So, um. It was just really, really valuable. So I figured on this very first night, the 20th of December, I will pull a rune for all of us uh, to consider. I'm going to go journal some more. They had us journal during this, which I really valued because I needed that time to like write it down. Honestly, I could have sat with the Kellyak longer, um, but you know, we were under time constraints. So I'm eager to go back in my living room and do it again. So um, because she said I could come anytime and I just want to hang out with her. Even if we don't talk, I just want to sit next to her and look at the water. So we'll get out our green man, our Iona rock, our other Iona rock, and our Icelandic rock. And we will pick one stone for us to consider on this first night of the solstice of Alban Arthen. So our first stone is Dice Cup, Pethro. So uh, this is the stone we know least about in the Elder Futhark alphabet. Um, and so people often think it's chance or luck um, or something waiting to be filled. And so um, what is it in this, in, in, in dreaming, right? Because this time period is not about, you know, making resolutions. It's about dreaming of the possibilities. What do you have to dream about? So take your notebooks. Go find a space, make yourself a cuppa, light a candle, which we did also in the ceremony, a red candle. And then we had mistletoe near us too, because mistletoe is a, is a central to druidic um, uh, celebrations. Um, what can you fill your cup with moving forward? What, what do you want to fill your life with? So I'm going to leave you with that, and I'm wishing you all the very best in light and love. I'll be back tomorrow uh, for um, another solstice message, and I'm wishing you all the very best in light and love. Be well. Take care. Bye-bye.